Hi, welcome to Meek Electronics. Hey everyone, welcome back to Meek Electronics. Today we're diving into the world of wireless power with a full teardown of a Qi certified wireless charger. These are the little gadgets powering up our phones without the mess of cables. But how exactly do they work? What circuitry is hiding inside? And how efficient is the design? Stick around as we open it up, break down the PCB, and explore every component responsible for wirelessly delivering power. The device we're working on today is the Showtech T511S, a popular budget-friendly Qi wireless charger that's capable of delivering up to 10 watts of wireless charging power. It supports 5 volts at 2 amps or 9 volts at 1.8 amps for fast charging, making it compatible with most modern phones that support wireless power. Let's take a look at the casing before we open it up. We can see the model number T511S, made by Showtech, and some of the regulatory markings like CE, FCC, and ROAS, confirming it's meant for global markets. Now that we know what we're working with, let's get inside. Now that we've got the back casing off, we can see this metal shield plate, likely stamped steel, fitted just beneath the coil area. Its main job is to act as a magnetic and electromagnetic shield, helping to redirect the magnetic field upward toward the phone, while also preventing interference with other electronics in the device or nearby. This improves charging efficiency, reduces heat buildup, and is a key part of any well-designed Qi wireless charging system. This is the main PCB of the Chotec wireless charger, the heart of the entire unit. Power is delivered through the micro USB connector located at the top of the board. This input supports both 5 volts at 2 amps and 9 volts at 1.8 amps. This section receives external power and immediately routes it through input protection components, likely including a diode or polyfuse to guard against overcurrent or reverse polarity. Nearby filtering capacitors stabilize the incoming voltage by reducing noise and ripple before the power is handed off to the main controller IC. Let's take a closer look at this section of the charger circuit, highlighted here in red. The centerpiece is this black integrated circuit with the marking S24050Y5G6010. Although the exact part number might vary depending on the manufacturer, its placement and surrounding components suggest it's most likely a voltage regulator IC. Its role is crucial. It helps maintain a stable voltage level for downstream components, protecting them from over voltage or fluctuation. Around the IC, we've got a cluster of surface mount capacitors and resistors like C28, C27, C16, and R40. These passive components form part of the filter and feedback network, ensuring the regulator responds accurately to input and output variations. The capacitors here are likely used for smoothing out voltage ripple, while resistors like R40 help set the output voltage or current limits through feedback control. You'll also notice the compact layout designed to minimize noise and allow efficient heat dissipation. This is a common configuration in charger circuits, especially when space and performance are tightly balanced. Now let's zoom in on this key component labeled CPH8533A1. This integrated circuit is likely the brains behind the wireless charging transmitter section. Its strategic location and surrounding components suggest it's responsible for managing the full bridge power stage and handling wireless charging protocols. Chips like this typically integrate multiple MOSFETs, two high side and two low side, to form a full bridge topology. This setup allows for efficient switching and precise control of the AC signal sent to the transmit coil. It's the heart of inductive power transfer converting DC input into a high-frequency AC field. Beyond power delivery, this IC likely supports key protocol compliance, including features like foreign object detection, FOD, strong overvoltage, overcurrent, and thermal protection. 
These safeguards ensure safe and reliable charging, especially in consumer devices. Manufacturers such as Southchip, Chipown, and iSmartware produce similar ICs, like the Southchip SC5001 or Chipown PN7727 that combine bridge control with protocol management. While we'd need a data sheet to confirm the exact specs of the CPH8533A1, its design hints at a highly integrated solution for wireless power transmission. Now let's take a look at one of the most important parts of a wireless charger, the tank circuit, also called the resonant LC circuit. In this unit, we have a single leaded capacitor marked Zedek MPP334J 100 volt. Let's break that down. The 334 tells us the value. It's 330,000 picofarads or 330 nanofarads. H2O, the tolerance for the generated voltage, is plus half 5%. And 100 volt is the rated voltage, which is stable and ideal for resonant applications. This capacitor is wired in parallel or in series with the transmit coil, depending on the design. Together they form an LC tank circuit, essentially a tuned circuit that resonates at a specific frequency. Wireless chargers typically operate around 100 to 205 kilohertz, depending on the Qi specification. So, if we know this capacitor is 330 nanofarad and we know the resonance frequency, we can estimate the inductance of the coil using the resonance formula. Rearranged to solve for L. If this charger operates at say 125 kilohertz, then L equals 4.7 U farad. That gives us a ballpark inductance for the coil. This shows how the capacitor and inductor are carefully matched to resonate at the right frequency for maximum energy transfer efficiency. This resonance boosts the voltage across the coil and allows wireless power to be transmitted effectively across the small air gap between the transmitter and receiver. And that wraps up our teardown of the Chotec T511S wireless charger. We've seen how the internal coil, shielding, and control circuitry all work together to deliver up to 10 watts of wireless power. It's a neat example of compact, efficient design and a great look into the tech we use every day without even thinking about it. Thanks for watching. If you found this teardown interesting, give it a like. Drop a comment with what you'd like to see next. And don't forget to subscribe to Meek Electronics for more deep dives just like this one. See you next time.